if you will join us at the flag salute, I'll ask uh, Mr. Preciado, will you lead the flag salute, please? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Please join me in saluting our flag. Ready, begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the, to the, flag the flag of the United, of the United States, States of, America of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Preciado. Okay, it is now time for the public comment session. <clears throat> At this time, the board will hear comments, presentations, or requests on matters listed on this agenda or other topics that are not on the agenda but are within the board's jurisdiction. Speakers are requested to give their names and addresses. Time limit for speakers is three minutes. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. The board reserves the right to limit presentations. This meeting is being recorded. Do we have anyone wanting to speak? No, nobody now. Okay, thank you. In that case, we'll just go right to uh, information items. And is the time going to be turned over to uh, Ms. Fox? Uh, that's yes, correct. That's correct, President Jones. Um, we're delighted to bring forward this item. I uh, thank you board members for attending this uh, special meeting. Uh, we found out through the process as lots of things have occurred this year with funding that um, with these grant funds, we needed to make a presentation in a different meeting than uh, the actual approval one um, to provide time for input and adjustment. And so again, lots of things that are different for us this year. I'm in 2021. So this is one of those examples. So uh, Ms. Fox is prepared um, with the slides for the presentation today. Yes, uh, once I, I need access to screen share though. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. It's ready. Thank you. So before I share my screen, let me tell you a little bit about the educator effectiveness grant. Um, the Educator Effectiveness Grant is part of Education Trailer Bill AB 130. Um, it is a grant of 1.5 billion one-time funds under Prop 98. It was allocated to districts based on um, the full-time equivalents of certificated and classified staff. Um, and so it is money specifically for professional development of teachers and classified staff. So let me... Okay, let me go back. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, so the Educator Effectiveness Grant um, is uh, called the 2021 Educator Effectiveness Grant. This is the draft. The law requires that the Educator Effectiveness Grant be presented at a board meeting prior to approval. So it cannot be presented and approved in the same board meeting. It does require a separate board meeting, which is why we're, we're here tonight. The Educator Effectiveness Grant is a grant that will provide funds for professional development through the year 2026. So what is the Educator Effectiveness Block Grant? Um, it is a program providing funds to county offices of education, school districts, charter schools, and state special schools, specifically for professional development, and to promote equity, quality, and effectiveness in teachers, in all educators. So there are 10 um, focus areas that align to this grant. Of the 10, nine of them apply to the high school district. The 10th does not. So of these 10, we can allocate the funds in any way among these 10 focus areas. So the first focus area centers around coaching and mentoring new staff and new administrators. Focus area two is about programs that lead to effective standards aligned instruction and improve instruction in literacy across all subjects. Focus area three is about re-engaging pupils and accelerating learning. Focus, is, focus area four is approaches that improve pupil well-being. So again, centered around well-being, social emotional uh, awareness. Um, five are practices to create a positive school climate. 
Focus area six is inclusive practices specific to students in special education. Uh, focus area seven is about our students who are English language learners, so improving instruction and supporting them with effective language acquisition. Eight is about uh, providing educators with new professional learning networks, so allowing them to go out into different areas um, other than what we provide here um, through the district. And then um, number nine is specific to Education Code 51226.7, our ethnic studies course, which must be in place by the 26, 25 26 school year, and it must be a graduation requirement for the class of 2930, I believe. I have to double check my date. So this is about the creation of that ethnic studies course. And then focus area 10 is about early childhood education, which does not apply to us as a high school district. So I um, went, ran out for feedback from our administrators, teachers, our coaches um, to, in some of these areas based on some of the ideas that we had gleaned from different in, um, community engaged community education partner feedback sessions that we've held with them. So if we just start first with focus area one, again, remembering that this is coaching and mentoring for certificated and classified staff. This total funds of our um, 800 and $23,000, um, we're allocating about 91,000, closer to 92,000 in mentoring and coaching. So we wanna continue with something we started this year, which was the new teacher academy. They meet monthly. Um, it's support for new and probationary teachers. And then also we wanna include in there some professional development for our instructional support team, our coaches, so they can support our new teachers. We want to continue a counselor's academy, recognizing that we have several new counselors or counselors have not had specific professional development in a while. So we're looking at areas uh, related to curriculum and instruction, bringing in guest presenters, doing some work with restorative circles, which is a huge part of our PBIS program and our alternatives to discipline program. We want to start next year an instructional assistant academy, recognizing that oftentimes we don't provide um, specialized professional development for our instructional assistants. We want to at least meet with them quarterly and really focus in on um, all of our instructional assistants or it, instructional assistants in special education, our in, instructional assistants for our English learner program, as well as our instructional assistants in general education. And those specifically are those that are at, at Promise House. And then as well as the district, we want to support administrator induction. We want to support our new administrators as they grow and become effective administrators. So that's focus area number one. Are there any questions about focus area number one? Rana, I, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Can you expand a little bit about the restorative circles under 1.2? Yes, so restorative circles is um, an alternative means to discipline. So let's say a student is having difficulty with um, acting out in class, or maybe they've had some difficulty with some aggression. In restorative circles, it's it's like a group session in which students are taught different ways to handle stress, different ways to handle um, different environments in the hopes of giving them replacement behaviors. So rather than suspending a child or putting a child in detention, the children sit in a restorative circle with a trained staff member and talk about perhaps why they're behaving that way, what resources are available, how can we help you be more successful? What do you need from us to be more successful? So it's a way to address the student and not just address the behavior in a, in a negative way. Currently, we have some teachers and some counselors trained in restorative circles. For example, um, Ms. Uh, Jessica Matthew, our assistant principal of special program, she specializes in restorative circles. But we don't have all of our counselors trained in that alternative model. Our goal is to suspend less and assist and provide resources more often. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about focus area number one, coaching and mentoring? Okay. So focus area number two, this is um, programs that lead to effective standards aligned instruction and improve instruction and literacy across all subject areas. So we've allocated $65,000 um, in this area. One of the ways we want to work on that standard design instruction is with Project Lead the Way. So Project Lead the Way is the main curriculum in two of our CTE pathways engineering and biomedical and the biotechnology pathway. And we wanna be able to provide other professional development under Project Lead the Way. Um, and then also we wanna continue something we have already outlined in our LCAP 
provide more opportunities for curriculum and assessment teams to meet for common assessments, curriculum alignment, literacy skills. And we wanna add an additional layer in that quarterly, the department chairs will all meet and discuss what each of their departments are doing. Again, with that focus on literacy being everybody's business and not just the business of the teachers in the English department. And that then they can discuss and they can make sure that we're supporting all of our teachers that way. Any questions regarding focus area two? So focus area three is all about um, re-engaging pupils and, um, and lead to accelerated learning strategies that lead to accelerated learning. And we really wanna take advantage of something that we started last summer, which is for our teachers and our classified staff, what we're calling a summer learning series. So we recognize that during the year, number one, it's hard to get substitutes. And number two, as a teacher, sometimes it's more work to be away from your classroom than it is to be there in your classroom. And Carlos could agree with me on that. So we wanna offer these continuation of summer learning series offered to both certificated and classified. This summer, we offered um, a course on digital literacy one-to-one -one, and we offered them the opportunity to be Google certified. So we wanna uh, continue with this year. And these are the topics we wanna continue going forward with. How do you engage students? How do you build positive relationships with students? Because we know that it's connections before content, right? If you don't have a relationship with your students, they're not hearing what you say. We want to continue with the social emotional learning, integrated ELD, accommodations and supports for students in special education. We realize, we recognize as an administrative team that our general education, our teachers who are in the general education setting don't have a lot of training and support in accommodations and modifications for students in special education. We want to offer that in the summer when they're when they have the time and they can really relax and they can learn what it is they need to learn. Supporting students who are experiencing homelessness and or foster youth is another area that we recognize we don't provide a lot of support to our teachers in that area. How do you support those students? What do they need? Um, equity, always equity is going to be our theme for many years to come as we move away from just general equity, but we start looking at um, racial injustice. We start looking at injustice for some of our vulnerable populations. How are we addressing everyone's needs? And then obviously we need to continue with some digital literacy. Um, again, this is something that is just more added funding for things that we already have in some other plans, but we want to continue this over the course of the next five years, and we want to ensure that the funding is there to support that. Um, I think as we're going into the next school year, our targets were, are going to center around equity, and in that umbrella of equity, you will see sessions like um, accommodations and supports for students in special education. You will see sessions around how do you um, support students who are experiencing homeless or students who are foster youth? And you'll see sessions around building those positive relationships because we don't wanna forget that we're only one year removed from the pandemic and our students still need all of those supports. Any questions about focus area number three? Okay. So focus area number four kind of piggybacks a little bit on what we had in focus area number three and that's about student well-being. You saw, um, I think it was just last month, we did a session for you on social emotional learning and what's going on in the schools. We want to continue to support that. And you can see that there's a lot of money um, of our 823,000 dedicated to this focus area because we truly believe that our student well being is one of the most important things we need to focus on. And again, we know that that connections before content, if they're not well, they can't learn. And when we talk about student health, we're talking about social, emotional, mental, and physical health, right? Just that they're healthy human beings. So we wanna put money into site-based SEL and PBIS teams. We wanna support that continuing work that they're doing and allow them to meet more frequently and have access to more resources. So 4.1 will be led by site administration, staff and students. Um, and we're looking at professional development that focuses on relationships with students and student well-being. The PBIS model hinges on positive relationships with students. It's positive behavior interventions and support. So we wanna focus on that. But we wanna broaden it from just each site doing their own thing to meeting quarterly as a district and site-based PBIS team. So we wanna have as a district where we analyze our data and we're looking at purchasing um, a program that will be a way that we can collect data on student social emotional uh, well-being through a, a program called BoardWorks. Um, so we're hoping to be able to implement that. 
Uh, we're looking at analyzing mental health data, analyzing SEL data, identifying needs and resources. And this team will advise me on the LCAP. So they will be able to say, hey, Rana, we think we need money for this. And I'll be able to use that as community partner uh, feedback for our LCAP. And then we're looking at, P uh, we're looking at um, offering a six period assignment at each site, uh, Phoenix Rising and Desert Oasis will just have one. We recognize the need for somebody to assist uh, in PBIS, somebody to support teachers in SEL, somebody that's able to meet with them or help us analyze data. And since the funding is available, we would like to offer a six period assignment. So you'll have one PBIS support staff at each site that will provide that support to staff, analyze data, and they will serve as the liaison on that district and site PBIS SEL team. And that's where a lot of that funding is coming from. Dr. Andrus. Yeah, thank you. So this six period assignment, uh, when we say that we're pretty much indicating most likely a teacher, possibly yes. a counselor paid an extra portion of their salary to take the lead. Is that correct? Yes, we've uh, we budgeted for someone to um, be paid one sixth of their salary to take the lead on that at each site. That was requested by the sites. Um, they requested two periods of release, but at this point in time, um, the, our budget, this particular budget didn't support it. So we went the route of offering someone to do a six period assignment. And just real quick, back to 4.1. Sorry, I, I, board members, if you've got questions, please ask too. But I had a question just real quick. Yes. 4.1, the second bullet, professional development that focus on relationships with students and student well-being. Uh, examples or thinking around that? It, it, has the team developed some more specific ideas on what that might look like? So I currently have um, staff attending um, Capturing Kids Hearts. Capturing Kids Hearts is a process that you use with students. It is not a canned program. So Capturing Kids Hearts is, is something that, I'm, that we're considering for this because what it does is it teaches you how to start every class period with, um, they have an Excel model. It's engage, explore, communicate. Um, I forgot, and then launch is the last one. I'm sorry, I forgot the E, it left my mind. So it, it's a process that every period we give teacher strategies to say, it's something as simple as saying, somebody tell me something good that happened to you today. Again, connection before content. Then you explore, you communicate your lesson, you, um, you then engage them in the lesson and you leave them every day with the lunch. Uh, class, I just wanna let you know, I think, you're, I think you're all intelligent, you're smart and you're going places with your life. Or let me leave you with this quote. Aristotle says, um, I forgot the whole, but it's like, excellence is not by chance, it's a habit. Let's remember that as we go about our day today. So it's, we, we, we've tried programs and we have, uh, we have a lot of different programs, but we need something that's like the plate or a process upon which to build. So one of the programs we're investigating is capturing kids' hearts right now. Thank you. And Ms. Matthew is currently at that training. Um, today and tomorrow should be at that training and bringing back information for us. Are there any other questions about focus area four? Uh, if I could just make a comment. Yes, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to capture a kid's heart if they'll just do it. Right. Yes, ma'am. And so I'm hoping with something like capturing kids' hearts, I can roll it out with a with the with a kid, the students and the teams that we have there, and we can begin that grassroots efforts. We just need someone to be those first followers and come on board. And I think you may see it rolled out first in App Promise House. It's a very definitely a program that's very applicable to App Promise House, Phoenix Rising. And we may have to start small and then grow it from there, but it's definitely something that I believe would be helpful. And I'm sending administrators to see if they think it would be helpful. And then I'm going to also send some teachers. I, we got scholarships to go this time because I have a relationship with them. They we're allowed to, we sent three people without having to pay for the conference. We just had to pay for travel. So focus area five is positive school culture. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mix Loss. I, yes. I had a question real yes, quick. Yes, of course. I'm back on four. I'm yes. Sorry. Now if for, for 4.3, so the, the data that they're having, the, that's, um, so it says, I don't know, data for staff and student needs, that's tied into the PBIS, right? The positive behavioral yes. intervention. So um, what every would they year, be analyzing exactly? Good question. So every yeah. year we administer the um, California Healthy Kids Survey. 
to students in grades nine and 11. And that gives us data about drug use, data about do they feel connected to school? Do they have someone at home? Um, what is their, uh, do they feel that teachers at school care about them? A lot of social emotional pieces. We're also in the process of negotiating with a company called BoardWorks, which will allow us to push out social emotional surveys to all of our students and we can collect that data. Um, also then I would expect this person to look at data regarding suspensions and expulsions to see is there a pattern there because we wanna make sure if we have a positive behavior in, a, in interventions and supports in our schools, we should not be seeing rises in suspensions and expulsions, right? We should be seeing a, a lowering of suspensions and expulsions. And also, what, who are the students in suspensions and expulsions? Are they disproportionate for ELs? Are they disproportionate for low income? Are they disproportionate for special ed? So any of that data that can inform us on our school culture and what we need to do to improve it. Okay, gosh. So, the, yeah. so that person's going to, so we're going to hire that person and their job is just to collect all that data. And then from that data, someone else is going to come up with the ideas for it. Right? Yeah. So or from like, that uh, data, when they analyze that data, they, that from 4.3, it circles back to 4.1 and 4.2. Gotcha. Okay. So that person will then have all the data ready. The and then when they meet team. as a site-based team, they can share gotcha. the data and then the team will make the decisions. And then from each site-based team, we'll come together as a district <laughs> to um, and then, with. yeah, and then come up with LCAP goals. So, okay, each site gotcha. can do something different, but what is the district do we need to focus on? All right, cool. Great Thank question. you. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so positive school culture. Um, this focus area centers a lot on our administrators, right? We all know that the administrator dictates the culture of the school. So I am... Um, putting into this, there's a program called Dare to Lead. The author is Brene Brown, if you've read her book. We're very lucky in that we found a, a certified trainer out of San Diego who is willing to come and provide the three-day institute to all of our management, classified and certificated. I believe it's up to 25 people. Um, it will be a three-day institute. Um, we're still negotiating the dates because I'm trying to find dates that work for the majority of them because uh, when we come back to school, there's registration and, and there might be some additional costs in, in flexing their days or something like that. But I truly believe that if we start with this being a courageous leader and, and daring to lead and what it takes to be a courageous leader, that just um, supports our equity talk. And, we, and in those things, I think uh, you'll see how to have hard conversations, how to encourage others to lead with courage. And so it's a three-day institute for all of our leaders, classified and certificated. Um, we want to continue our leadership learning series for administrators, continuing our focus on equity. We had a self-assessment today, um, and we decided that for next semester, we're going to start focusing on our data, that we do a lot of talking about things, but we don't actually look at the data. So we want to spend time focusing on data and how that, um, how that um, impacts equity. We MTIS, multi-tiered systems of support. So we have PBIS, but again, today we talked about interventions. What interventions do we have for our students? Because we're noticing a trend of students going straight from absences to SARB without a lot of interventions. Um, suspension and expulsion. Uh, we have some disparate information between certain vulnerable groups that are being suspended and, or expelled more often and vulnerable populations and their needs. Um, vulnerable populations being students who have IEPs, students who have 504s, students who are experiencing homeless, students who are in the foster care system, students who belong to the LGBTQ community, students that belong to underrepresented groups in our district. So any of those, what, what do our students need? How can we begin to look at each and every student and identify what they need? And then from that, we would go on with our district professional development on equity, continuing that theme. Again, looking at the similar topics to what we've been looking at with our administrators. Again, focusing on equity for each one of our students and looking at where we have disparity, where we have disproportionate data and trying to um, address those needs. But the biggest portion of this is the Dare to Lead Institute. It is expensive, but I do believe it's money well spent. And once the, once, um, once the plan is, if the plan is approved next Tuesday, then I'll come back with the contract for Dare to Lead. <clears throat> Any questions about focus area five? Okay. 
So focus area six centers on um, students who are in special education and inclusive practices. We need to continue our partnership with Imperial County SELPA. They have a wealth of professional development that is free. They have multiple grants on students who are not only in special education, but are also English language learners and how to address their needs. We need to focus on inclusive practices, specifically supports for our general education teachers, classroom supports. And it isn't here, but because Christina didn't get to me in time, but when I bring it back, you'll see um, co-teaching as something we wanna focus on. How do we best train our teachers so that we can begin to meld special ed and gen ed together. So our students are not pulled out of a gen ed classroom. We're pushing in for supports for them. We wanna create an inclusive practices work group. Somebody again, like, like before with that six period assignment that they'll focus in on our data pertinent to our students in special education and our students with 504s. Although keep in mind that 504 is is um, belongs in the general education world. It is not a special ed um, document or legal requirement, it's general ed, but often those two go together. We want this work group to include administrators, teachers, both gen ed and special ed teachers, instructional assistants, because our instructional assistants and special education are out in the classrooms, instructional coaches, as well as special education staff, which could be psychologists, um, it could be, um, uh, for example, Denise, who's in the, who's our special ed clerk, other people in special education, it could be somebody from the outside. We want them to meet at least quarterly, and their job is to address the needs of students in special education and need for additional support for staff, and they will consult on LCAP goals and actions. They will advise me on if there's any needs that we can include in our LCAP using our supplemental and concentration dollars, because many of our students in special education are also low income. English learners, uh, and so they qualify for, for SNC dollars. We recognize we have a lot of work to do in the area of special education, but until we sit down and analyze our data and see where we are, it's hard to know where we need to go, which is why this work group is so important to us. Rana, I have a, I have a question about this one. I know yes. Forcus Area 5, you said the majority of those funds are going to be for the three-day institute. Yes. Where is the majority of the funds going to in Focus Area 6? Because I know SELPA, you said, had resources that... They're, the Most of them are free. Most of this money is right. going into that work group. Um, most of the money here, most of that 70000 is in paying the teachers to stay after hours or work together on... Um, on weekends to be part of that focus group. Because again, if you, if, there's a saying out there that says, if you wanna know what a district holds important, look at where they put their dollars, right? So we wanna put our dollars on, on our staff and our teachers that know our programs and know our students working together to say, what are we doing well and where do we need to improve? So the majority of it is in 6.2, there's very little in 6.1. Okay. So for, uh, focus area seven is our English learner. So it's very similar. If you remember back to our um, ESSER three plan, we allocated around, I wanna say $200,000, $250,000 to focusing in on our English learners in our, um, in our ESSER three plan. So we wanted to continue that professional development that we're doing again with an English learner work group. So we wanna make sure that, yeah, we do a lot of talking about what we need and we do a lot of talking about looking at data, but we need to actually do the work, right? We've yeah. done the thinking about it. We've done the talking about it. We need to do the work. So again, this work group um, is $45,000. It's all teacher salaries because that's what um, educator effectiveness has to go for. It can't go for a lot, anything else. Um, administrators, teachers, instructional assistants, coaches, special education staff as well because we know that many of our students are students in special education and they're English learners at the same time. Again, meeting quarterly, addressing the needs of students in the English learner program, consulting on LCAP goals and, and actions. And we specifically want them to focus on our LTELs and our newcomers. So an LTEL is a student who's been in the US more than six years and still has not exited your uh, English learner program. So we have quite a few of those. I mean, our newcomers is an area that Sometimes they get lumped in 
because we don't have very many of them. So I really want those will be those two focus groups. And I will say that this work group will more than likely be led by Patty Quijada, who is our uh, director of instruction for our ELs and migrants. And I, and I put meet quarterly rather than monthly because this is a heavy, this is a, a heavy lift, right? And if we ask her, we can't burn our, our staff out. So I'll, I'd love for them to meet monthly, but it's at a minimum quarterly. And then I have other funds if they decide they wanna meet more often. I have funds in SR3, LCAP, uh, ELO, um, and a lot of other funds. I can't think of them off the top of my head. So fo focus area eight is about that new professional learning network. So when I did some research on this, it said allowing teachers to be and staff to be part of networks that are not normally offered. Um, and it indicated things like allowing them to have some choice in their professional development. So we allocated about $32,863. It's a weird number. It's because our grant is like 823,683. That's why the number's kind of awkward. Um, but we wanna allow them the opportunity to say, hey, I know our LCAP goal is this, I wanna attend this professional development. Um, but we did put some criteria. It has to support the goals and actions of the LCAP or the SPSA, the, the Single Plan for Student Achievement. And um, they can join professional communities of practice through ICOE or other approved providers. Um, and then our coaches and us, we can decide if it's an approved provider. So sometimes they'll have a, um, PE community of practice that meets on Saturdays and maybe our teachers want to join that and we'll say okay we'll pay for your registration right we'll pay for you to go um, so we want to give them a little bit of choice in that but also we need to make sure that it meets the goals and actions and objectives of the district I, I, I would like to comment yes, I've, I've seen numerous programs over the last 60 years I've been at Central Southwest and as a board member, sabotage by teachers who didn't have input into a program. Yes. They've got to have some input. Mm -hmm. Right, which is why I think these focus groups or the work groups, I call them focus groups and then we change the language to work groups. Um, I think they're important because we're saying to them, your feedback is important to us because what you're giving me might is going to probably end up in the LCAP. And I would agree. There's a saying that uh, we learned at Dr. Andrews and I learned and I'm trying really hard to live by it. And it's um, nothing about us without us. Right. So it means including them, because, again, you're right. If they if you try to do it to them, they're going to fight you. If you do yeah. it with them, more than likely, 75 percent of them will come on board with you. Yes. There's always the outliers, but you're absolutely right. So giving them a little bit of choice in professional development, those things that maybe we normally wouldn't support um, is important in the educator effectiveness grant. Thank and you. Then fo focus area nine is our ethnic studies curricula. So it's mandated to be in place by the 25-26 school year. This is going to take some work. Um, there are specific uh, requirements for an ethnic studies curriculum in the ed code. Um, it is, um, African American studies, there's um, Asian studies, there's specific cultures that have to be included. We can use a course we already have. So I think, for example, we have Latino studies or Mexican American history. We could pull it out and use it as an interim piece, but we have to meet the requirements of the ed code for this particular course, and it's very specific. I will tell you, it will be, it could end up being a hot topic because part of what's required is the study of, of cultures, the Muslim culture, the Islamic culture, cultures that are that could that can create um, negative feelings for some members of our community. And they've already expressed to me that if we go that route, they will be um, protesting at the board because they have true, they have just some some very uh, deep rooted beliefs in that. But it is required, and it is important to our students that we have this ethnic studies curriculum. So again, you're looking at the work group. Uh, it's the administration. It will more than likely be led by uh, either Mr. Pechtel or um, Mr. And, Ms. and or Mr. Lyon because they have a background in social studies. It sits in the social studies content area. Obviously, social studies teachers. I want to include teachers of special education, other content area teachers, instructional assistants, instructional coaches, and and I want to include some students when it's appropriate. I wanna run some of that by our, by our students, maybe our juniors and seniors. 
um, because I want to make sure that what we're doing is something that they see value in as well. And really the goal is to develop the course, develop the course curriculum and ensure the course meets all of our A through G requirements. So this is probably a two to two and a half year process to get us there with the goal of it being ready to implement in 24-25, but it's mandated by 25-26 so that we have a little bit of a buffer. And that $56,000 is all um, uh, extra duty pay for teachers to meet after hours. Obviously, if we can provide subs and do some during the day, we would love to do that. And then we could use that for subs as well. And then um, focus area 10 is um, early childhood education and child development. It doesn't apply to us as a high school district. And then this is the budget. So the budget, really interestingly enough, this is the first grant I've had that has you allocate the budget out for the entire years. It doesn't mean that if we run short in 21, 22, we can still use the money from 22, 23, but they wanted you to project out and make sure that you were continuing that educator effectiveness plan for the entire duration of the grant. So you can see that our grant amount is $827,363. Of that 91,000 um, is allocated to focus area one, which is coaching and mentoring. 65,000 for focus area two, 60,000 for focus area three, this student well-being focus area four, 310, 572. Uh, focus area five has 96. Focus area six has 70,000. Focus area seven at 45, 32, 56, and no money allocated to 10. It doesn't apply to us. So our budget um, is allocated for the total of 827,363. Uh, less money allocated to 21, 22, because we're halfway through the year. A lot of our money coming in 22, 23, 23, 24. And then again, it begins to taper off as you take away the um, ethnic studies curriculum uh, that's here in focus area number nine. You can see that it went from 25, 25 down to six because my, I'm anticipating it'll be ready to go by 24, 25. If not, we can always allocate funding sources from the LCAP or funding sources uh, from other areas to um, supplement that if we need more time. And so that is the end of the presentation of the Educator Effectiveness Funding Plan. Are there any more questions? Emma, your mic is off. Yeah. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. I don't anticipate any changes between now and next Tuesday, with the exception of I will be adding co-teaching in in the um, the focus area for inclusive practices, uh, just as a sub bullet. And I'll highlight that when I do the um, the agenda item. Ms. Fox, I had a question. Yes. For, um, I noticed like in, in 4.3 for mm -hmm. like the budget or like it's being implemented in 21, 22. And for 4.3, the six period assignment. Yes. Uh, that's going to be started in second semester when I read it. So with with that, I, I remember you were saying that it was uh, counselors and teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just gonna that's that's gonna where you said we're gonna take a six of their salary and then add it on to it, right? And they're gonna take a yeah. So once they once the plan is approved, uh -huh. um, then I can give the go ahead uh, to each site to recruit to fly basically yeah, yeah. to advertise that they they have this one six or to look for somebody it could be somebody that already is doing sel so for example heidi rodriguez is in charge of their sel pbis at central um i don't assume it would be jackie because jackie has plenty of other things to do but there could be a counselor there's harlan de and there's you know that they find someone and then we can start it second semester is the goal to get it started it may not start the minute we come back in january but my my goal is once it's approved for them to start looking to start it no later than February. And then, so they'd have to like during six period, they have to be working on that. So it is a or... six period assignment. So let's say that um, I have my prep is third yeah. period. So my third period will be allocated to working on, on that. Now gotcha. it may be that Perfect. I'm not just analyzing data. Maybe I am um, meeting with students doing some restorative circles. Maybe I'm meeting with a teacher that's struggling. I can support a teacher if they have the same prep or I can go in and look at, you know, help another teacher. Maybe I'm meeting with students oh, okay. and I'm trying to talk to them about 
it's all about PBIS support. So it could be analyzing data, it could be supporting students, it could be uh, supporting staff. But um, from what the um, teams tell me, there's work that they could be doing every day. Maybe they're creating presentations, looking for stuff. Uh, and it's just one uh, 55 minute block yeah, out of their day. So that I'm assuming the time will go very quickly. Uh, and then I will also, there's a little bit of freedom. If for example, um, the data has been analyzed, I'm sure that we have more work in that area that we can be doing. Okay. Hopefully and then I noticed, having... I noticed that part of the budget uh, ends in 2526. So that thing, so that right there, after that data is gone, like in the future, I'm assuming if we get more grants, if it's effective, yes. we just would add it, add it on yeah. because so yeah, it'd be unfortunate to... if it's effective and then out of nowhere, it's like, yes. all right, well, 25, 26 on, you know, too bad, no more data. Like yeah. That, so you unlucky. see that, yeah, the budget does decrease because we needed yeah. to, we wanted to make sure we got the work in and also there could be exactly. more professional development. So what'll happen then starting in 24, 25 and 25, yeah. 26, I can shift that funding into LCAP. Gotcha. Yeah, there we go. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Sounds that good. Was, Thank you. That's kind of where my questioning was also, uh, mm -hmm. like if it works and it's, you get some momentum, kind of how is this going to be sustained? Right. So my actual goal is after um, 20, after, by 23, 24, what I really would like to um, include in the LCAP is an instructional support coach in this area. So that all they do is work on um, social emotional learning, PBIS, and those kinds of things. But that takes a little bit of time to, um, you know, write the job description. And I wanted to say, okay, let's just get it going, and then I can put it in the background in our LCAP to begin to look at that. But I do believe that we need an instructional support in this area as well, and it might be a blended area. It might be two things. Um, but I needed, we just need time to see what the needs are. We don't want to jump to hiring a full-time position if we're not going to need it in the end. So there are, it doesn't, you're right. It reflects like it's just going away, but it's because there are plans in the out years to either add it into LCAP or have a position that's an instructional coach that focuses on those areas. I'm hoping we bring on capturing kids' hearts, which we'll need a coordinator uh, if we, um, continue with restorative circles, alternatives to discipline, it could require some, so there's other things, uh, but uh, it is not just going away. It'll be funded a different way. Could there be a TOSA? Yeah, it would be like a TOSA, uh, like our instructional coaches right now that we have that focus on in, in curriculum. This okay. one could focus on uh, social, emotional, student well-being, or it could focus on PBIS, multi-tiered system of support. There's a lot of roles. Um, but we have to get all that training first before we're well versed in it to be able to add somebody into that position. Great questions. Anything else? And just a reminder that these are one time funds. So um, this money, we will have to expend it all, which I don't think we'll have any trouble by 25, 26, and unless the government decides to give us more money, which we'll happily take. Thank oh, one you. other place it could roll into, just to let you know, it can also roll into Title II. So Title II can support a coaching position as well. Um, it would just, we'd have to realign different needs of the district. So there are multiple places we can continue to fund it. A quick question, Ms. Fox. So yes. Overall, what I'm taking, like, so it's a, so it's a one-time grant, like the way I'm, I guess, in, I'm inferring like the presentation or interpreting it is, so we're going to, we're kind of using it to see where, you know, we need to grow, et cetera. What works, what clicks, we'll try and find, like you said, title two, mm -hmm. put on out cap so we could budget it for the future and other stuff that didn't work out. It's like, Hey, Hey, at least we tried, right. you know, we, 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 we tested it out, see what worked. And so I think that's pretty cool. Like it's just, yeah. Well, yeah, we could test it out, see where we're going to grow in. So that's cool. And yeah, I, it's because it's supplemental money. And some of the things exactly. we may only need for a year or two, mm -hmm. but some of these, some of these issues will continually be issues for us. How do we address the needs of our vulnerable populations? Um, you know, how do we make sure, how do we have inclusive practices? But this gives us the opportunity to investigate, look at data, fund it, because to say to teachers, I want you to be part of this work group for 10 days out of the year on your own time, yeah. um, it's not such an easy sell because <laughs> they, they work hard, right? Yeah. And they have lives and we're asking them to give up their personal time. So this allows us to say, we value this enough that we're willing to pay you to serve on this committee. Again, 
If you wanna see where the priorities are in a district, look where they put their funding. And I just think it's important to say these are, that your professional development is important to us. Sounds good, thank you, I like it. Thank you. I have a quick question for Carlos. Yeah. How many, how many cats do you have back there? Oh man, three, six, nine, 12, 13. And then I still have two, my two that I wear all the time aren't on there. Um, okay. Yeah, my Harry Potter ones are the ones that I always wear. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just keep them there so I know where to find them quickly. But right now I have 15. And then my two favorite, I have the entrance to my door when I'm walking my dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My office game room. <laughs> Do we need to sum this up now? So, Ms. Jones, at this point in time, it's simply a presentation to share with the board and so that you know kind of what's available and what will be on the as for approval. Because at the at the meeting next week, we don't have planned a presentation. It'll just be the action item. Okay. So if upon reflection or review, if there's either comments or suggestions, please get them to Ms. Fox quickly so we can take those into consideration before we present them the final draft of this. Thank you. Other than that, that's all we have. Okay, then I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Take care, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Bye. Thank it. you. Be well. Mr. Rodriguez, I like your background. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Good night. I could send it to you if you want it. Yes, please. I would love it. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll send it to your email right now.